Hey, what's up, guys? It's Apollo Uchiha here, back with the next part of What If Naruto Joined the Anpu. And before continuing this part, if you haven't, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you like the content of this channel. And without further ado, let's continue with our story. Thirty minutes out from the noble gathering, being forced to hold a henji for over a week that was half his size and do it while in an ornate kimono was not Naruto's idea of fun. Being carried on his teammate's Kenma's shoulder and eating snacks, though, that was the most enjoyable pastime Naruto could partake in. You're getting crops in my hair, you blonde bastard, Kenma gripped. Oh, but I'm a brunette, Naruto pointed out snarly. Shut it and quit eating, you're heavy enough already, the Senbon enthusiast whined. Though Naruto Henji could alter his shape, it didn't change the fact that his weight remained the same. Wonder how he'd take the information that you're rating about 25 pounds on your torso. Krama sniggered in amusement. Naruto sent a mental, smir mental smirk back. We'll, we'll find out when we're back safely in Konoha, and I can hide from him for a couple of days. Naruto wanted to leave, thank you very much, and didn't doubt Genma ability to kill him and blame another village for it. Not that he would, but one could be never too careful with powerful shinobi. Hey, Hayate, what exactly is this noble's gathering anyway? A pregnant pause ensued at Naruto's question. Ah, a sleepover to build political bonds. Hayate finally managed before coughing again. I, I, I have to sleep over with a bunch of spoiled brats? Naruto demanded. Raido tossed a book to the young Anbu slash Chunin with a pink cover. How to add during sleepovers for noble ladies. This will help, but weren't you taught how to act like a lady for undercover ops? Naruto asked. With Naruto's Henji, he'd be excellent at Esponage. Hayate and Raido noticed the sudden pale look on Naruto's face and Genma felt the shiver. Never mentioned that week again. Uh, you okay? Genma looked up, a bit concerned. Naruto shivered again. All I say is Kurna Yuhi is a far crueler than Ibiki at times. All that tea. He cried. Three sweat drops fell, but they let it go. Soon the group was in front of a gold-plated gate. Four guards looking stoic at the ninja, though they were disguised as samurai. Genma set Naruto down, getting into character by bowing to the little princesses. With nose in the air, Naruto closed the book and snagged back, making them disappear somewhere inside his kimono. Tsubaki sama, I wasn't aware your guards would be samurai. You usually have attendants. And where is your father, an elderly woman with gray hair piled in a tall bun, said airily as she daintily made her way outside the gate. Naruto recognized her from the file he'd been given to study over important people. Sabaki knew this woman was her father's old tutor and friend from the family. Sasame was her name, he believed. Bachan. Naruto said giddily in the same manner he imagined the real six-year-old Tsubuki would say. He bowed politely to her before heading inside next to the hunched but still regal woman. I came out by myself this time. But the samurai are so weird. Only eat sandbond like a camel. Naruto sent a wink at the now twitching Genma. Hayate had to cough to cover up a snort while Raido inched away from the Senbon user, looking to practice on someone. Oh, how nice, dear. I didn't know Sen Samurai's use Senbon. Sasame commented, biting her lip nervously. Naruto noticed this instantly, as did the rest of the team. Hayate gave a look with a clear message be on guard. That evening, Naruto was finally getting the hang of the whole court scene. Over the last several hours, she greeted dozens of females from higher ranking positions in their rather extravagant night gowns. Naruto himself wore a loose silk white garment underneath the below sleeves and loose buttons skirt, though were two senbons laced with the new fastest acting sleeping poison Anko had taught him after he helped creating the summoning scrolls for the tuning exams. One prick and even a trained ninja would be out within a minute. Much less a civilian, Naruto himself only had partial immunity. One thing that confused Naruto was the lack of girls, the age of Tsubuki. The age the first attendant was six, but the youngest was nine. That spoke of the gathering true purpose, the amass allies and degrade enemies, much like ninjas' villages. Tune in exams, really. Mostly wouldn't send a six year old to debut with the likes of the shallow girls Naruto was greeted and kissing up to. No. Best to let the older children take care of it. Then again, most nobles had several daughters, not 
one lone six-year-old who had the political weight piled on. Subuki-chan, I haven't seen you since you were a toddler. Squeal. We simply must hang out tonight. An older girl, globed Naruto, looking around 15, wearing a black nightgown that fit to her form. The girl's silver hair and milky blue eyes made her rather exotic, looking for the normal, modern looking nobles that riled on makeup and clothes to become so beautiful. At the questioning glance, she looked sheepish. Sorry, I shouldn't introduce myself. I am Hana Tachibana, your father and mine joined on the Tachibana Juno shipping company and working together in the trading course. That's where her head that's where he heard that name, Hana Tachibana, only daughter and heiress to her father's side of the company that dominated the shipping marketing. Oh, of course, Hana-san. My father talks about you often. Naruto lied, hoping it was true. Hana's eyes dark slightly but was gone before he could notice. With a grin, she pulled Naruto away in a very unrefined manner. Not like the other nobles. Let's go, Subuki-chan. We can eat the snacks before they come out of the kitchen. But they're gathering. Naruto tried. It was now he wished his guards were here, like most of the other Naruto's team had been put into the bunker-like setting to keep assassination attempts or political bay, political or political, by play at bay. The best they could do was have Hayate send a shadow clone along with some of Naruto's henges into the local servants. Apparently, the bodyguards would normally be allowed to be in the hallways, but on coincidence, they changed this year. The first year, the only daughter of Hiroshi Juno, co-owner of the new largest shipping company after Gato fell, was old enough to attend this gathering. It's really just politics. Most of those girls would just slow you down if you associate with them. Oh, here we are, Hana said gleefully as she pushed Naruto into a room with her. The dim light and lack of food was all Naruto needed to know. This wasn't the kitchen and Subuki shouldn't trust this Hana person. It got worse when Hana suddenly became a Konoichi with the same black hair instead of silver. Subuki-chan, didn't your father even tell you to not believe everything you hear and that old woman said you were bright for your age? With a smirk, the girl walked slowly towards what she believed to be a trembling six-year-old. Too bad for that girl that appeared to be a seduction and infiltration specialist. Chunin level by her chakra Naruto could now fell, feel once they were alone. He might not be equal to his peers, but he was a non -po. And the girl in her field couldn't hold a candle to ones in Naruto's. Don't worry, I won't kill you. No, I just give you a little shot. Your father will sign his half of the company over to my client before long and you'll be back to being a spoiled princess. Well, as spoiled as a bankrupt girl you can be. You're a ninja? Naruto squeaked in mock fear, crouching down as if caught while fishing for information. He found out that Sasame was in on it. Now, he just needed the village. The Konoichi stopped and grinning confidently, a complete change from the menacing presence. Yep, you're looking at a tune in kid from Sunagakure, best village in the world. Now hold still and it won't hurt. She moved in with a shot, intended to jab it in the, into the neck. Naruto took the opportunity and stabbed the Konoichi in the arm. Oh, you little. But she couldn't have a chance to retaliate when he appeared behind her after a Kavirami with a pillow nearby with a brutal chop. Courtesy courtesy of his morning training with Guy, the girl fell in the heap on the ground. She looked up hatefully. The poison took effect. How? Oh, I didn't sense any chakra. A shape shift, he said simply. After she scumbled, his eyes turned red, turned hard. With the current tense, relation between the villages and war inevitable standing orders from Dragon Sama were for Anbu to kill any possible ninja from other villages that interfered or appeared during the mission. Every last body counted in Sage. After all, looking at the girl, though, who couldn't be more than 14 or 15 Naruto let out of wins, killing her felt wrongs on so many levels. She was weak, overconfident, no great, a split-second combat, and a ninja, a heavy heart, accompanied him but orders for orders. The village came first, a smooth motion had his holstered kunai from his thigh and a clear swipe severed the throat, followed by a stab in the heart. The only solace was she felt no pain. My, how brutal of you, kid. The village comes first, huh? Even before your own petty humanity? Chroma taunted half-heartedly. The fox felt his prisoner's pains even now, but the biting words just spilled out. Shut it, Chroma. 
There is a mission to complete. Naruto made a shallow shadow clone that expelled immediately, letting the other clones know what was going on. Hayate would come with a scroll to carry the body in later, as Naruto couldn't transform back now to do it. Back in the ballroom type setting, no one noticed Naruto had been gone, and he slipped in in time to see the food arrive, blustering on a pleasant smile for one of the girl's friends, Suki, from his memory. Naruto moved through the night with the grace of a shinobi and blocked the Suna Kunoichi from his mind. That night, he slipped out of his assigned room with three other girls, a shadow clone taking his place, transforming back into himself to suddenly crept through the building. Compared to his training and the trouble of pranking in Orange was, this was nothing. In the hallways, the couple of guards he came across were easily avoided, or though the hypnotized Kenjutsu suddenly needed to go use the restroom. Giving Naruto a pass, Hayate found Sasame within her room and was interrogating her when Naruto arrived. Please stop, her eyes begged, being unable to make a sound. With a gag in her mouth, Naruto nodded to his leader before putting a silent seal up. Nobody would hear. Tell me. Cough. Before I get serious, Hayate warned. He was used to interrogating in the field and her rough up appearance spoke to his skills. The woman in front of them, still dressed in the noble gowns, was a join by the look of it. Hayate had broken her fingers, among other things, and looked ready to do anything else needed. With a fervent agreement, Hayate released a gag. Who else is here? Two more. Mother Chun is towards besides the one you caught. She said quickly, apparently not aware that her student was dead. The other two are disguised as guards on the western walls. Naruto pops a clone he summoned earlier. Aida and Genma could take care of them. Contrary to popular belief, masking chakra wasn't that difficult. It was quite easy, in fact, for those in the Suna squad specialty. The tra tricky part, though, was making it seem like you weren't doing it. Two special Jonins know that they knew what to look for, would be able to sense them without much effort, or allies. This mission is obviously a failure. Let us go and we'll leave. The woman begged. Judging by her chakra levels, she only made a special journey probably for seduction skills as she was rather pretty and was employing the helpless car to get out. Statically, short women who begged were more likely to be released in compassion. After our mission is done, I'm sure we will. The stop as Naruto had already slit her throat and was cleaning the blade on the woman's shirt. Naruto, there wasn't any need to do that. Hata looked shocked at the 12-year-old cold action. Naruto fixed his leader with a blank look as he sealed the Konwichi's body inside another skull. Hata Senpai, I'm sure you got Senpai and others have told you. What is Suna planning? He asked every Jonin was aware their ally was almost certainly betraying them soon and what Anbu has been ordered to do. Yes, but this isn't an Anbu mission, but I am still an Anbu Senpai. Taking out a squad now. No matter how unused to combat they are, will potentially stop Konha Shinobi from dying in the future. Naruto astonished. I killed the other one for the same reason. Your clone didn't say anything. I thought it was in a battle. He had a whisper. He looked at his temporary subordinate with a mix of respect and avoidance. Like most special Jonin and above Hayate was not above killing, but seeing Naruto killed so heartlessly was a bit of a wake-up call. Most had put the thoughts of war to the back of their minds, a nightmare none wanted to think about. Naruto had it at the front. His blonde teammate was a better shinobi simply because he did the hard choice to help prevent the what-ifs of war. He killed, the cold, he killed in cold blood today to save his village tomorrow. An Anbu agent, indeed. Let's go. A clone just dispelled. The two left our combat specialist and took the encounter beyond the walls. Genma and Raido are holding them off, but fighting in the dark and ninjutsu isn't their specialty. With a nod, the two shinobis raced to their comrades' help. Several shunshins later, the duo came across the spark of kunai and senbons clanging against one another in the crescent moonlight. Genma was more of a straight strategist than a fighter, though his weapon's accuracy was top-notch. However, that didn't help as the dark mate hitting the Suna ninja difficult both hard-wind affinities to contraduct the weapon and the one fighting Genma appeared frighteningly proficient with it. Genma, back up Raido. Hayate ordered as Naruto own wind jutsu blocked their wind from cutting the sunborn man. Got it. 
was his curt reply before disappearing towards the sound of rider further off, holding off the other Suna ninja. Naruto had trained with the sickly swordsman by his side multiple times as such didn't need to speak to know this jutsu the man wanted to use. Without a sound, a sword channeled wind chakra. Konoha scum, prepared to die? The black clad ninja, perhaps Konoichi, but Naruto didn't have the time to care, but bit out while going through hand heels. Kurama, can I use your eyes? Naruto asked. When he used Kurama's demon's eyes, his sight became sharper. Could see better, better in the dim light at night. A cave, a terrifying appearance. Heh. <laughs> Let's see him piss himself. And Naruto, normal cruel and blue, transformed into a cat like red slits that glowed in the night. Wind style, great hur hurricane. An almost vortex barrel towards the Konoha side. It met with Naruto wind coated blade and shadow clone barrier, cancelling it. Using this distraction, Naruto appeared in front of the Sunanin. You're, you're, you're like Kara, the ninja realized. As Naruto's blade cut down, the ninja dodged demon was his short as he jumped from the tree to tree in a roundabout fashion. Perhaps Naruto shrugged Shadow Clone Jutsu and three clones charged with swords. Heh, <laughs> I'm a wind user, stupid demon. An explosion of wind erupted from around him and took out the clone. Where you go, coward? Was the infrustrated grunt. Naruto had used the momentary distraction to use the headhunter jutsu to go underground. Right here. Naruto snarled under the influence of the slight cubic chakra, popping out of the ground below the enemy's feet, sword pointing to upwards. Akaverami saved the man, re reappearing several meter back. Perfect. Dance of the crescent moon. Several Hayate struck the surprised ninja before he could muster a Kaverami or more wind. Once Hayate struck a leg, another the back, the third impaled the stomach, the man dropped like a log, bleeding out. Ha! He asked Naruto looked down, a bit sad as his eyes, a bit, a little bit of fearlessness frailness that came with them disappeared. You focused on one opponent and don't have enough chakra or experience to jump from one attack to the next to avoid me. Hayate explained while coughing from the high speeds he just produced. You were good now for a chunin, but your cockiness is splitting up while facing a jonin and a chunin. That was your downfall. Spare my teammates. If you tell me something, Naruto prompt. The dying man didn't need to know what happened and Konoha couldn't keep Suna prisoners without breaking the treachery. Something that had to be done carefully, though it didn't happen. At the fact, the man was, man was from the village, and Naruto knew he was keeping a secret and chuckled. No, not village secrets. I just want to know if it's true, Kara can fully transform. The spies heard rumors, but any confirmation was appreciated. Yes, and no one can kill him. Not even the Kazikage. His sand has a mind of its own. The man spoke quickly, even as the Cut wound, no doubt, blustered with pain. Thank you, Naruto said sincerely, and Hayata stabbed him in the heart. You knew it all, Dad. You knew all that, Naruto. Hayata said quietly, I know, but dying men have less reasons to lie. Dragon taught me, Dad. I just made sure I had all the facts straight. With a shrug and sealing off the body, took the Kona Shinobi went straight towards their team. Yo, I take it you two finished up. Genma waved with his own scroll of the body. They taken them back to Kona for examination and mind walk if possible. Dead bodies were easier to hide than live ones after all. Several days later, Kona, you fought it well. Those ninjas might have been less than battle ready, but killing them provided us with potential information. Mouse, excellent on following the standing orders. I know from your report that killing an incapacitated enemy is difficult, but in doing so, you gave Konoha another advantage. Dragon complimented Naruto puffed up a bit. In pride, while the other three looked in a mature, a bored and uneasy, killing defenseless foes that weren't against Konoha was something most normal shinobi didn't need it to do in the peacetime, and it had been years since Hayate did so. Killing every squad that went against you on a mission was allowed, but could spark tensions and in turn another war. But they were preparing for war. And even if not, the blonde next to Hayate smiling was like his girlfriend, the shadow protectors of the village, Anbu. Thank you, dragon. I am proud of you, as well. Naruto, how are you feeling about it? The Hokage asked. He was now confident in Naruto being a Nanbu, but doing what he did at such a young age must have been stressful. I am fine, Hokage-sama. I hated doing it, but the village comes first. We protect the village from shadow, taking the dirtiness in life to protect the village. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Naruto spoke, echoing the words of the commander and other captains. Smiling in pride, the Hokage nodded, and that is admirable. You'll be happy to note that Tachibana Noble and his accomplices have been arrested and are being dealt with Lord Juno. Thanks you 
and has promised to hire Konha exclusively in the future. This course smiles everywhere. To be assured to be a rich client's first choice meant Konha would gain more repetition and higher wages. Finished debriefing, Hayate offered to take the group out barbecue after they had all changed. Naruto declined and darted off to find his partner after she wasn't in the apartment. I swear I need to learn those tracking seals. Screw being a level 4, this is madness, Naruto mentally screamed two hours later when he still couldn't find and locate the feline despite numerous spots along the favored hangouts. Finally, he spotted Tora being chased by a Ganon team. Team 10, it looked like. When they lost Tora again, Naruto swooped down from a building, scooping his other feline friend up. Gotcha, Tora. His voice stopped and in scratching, he looked up at the fat kitten in his arms. Now, where is the angel? When Tora suddenly looked everywhere but at him, his blood chilled. Tora, take me to angel or else I'll never let you in my apartment again and put a tracking seal on you that links to your owner. That got the cat and she led the unmused Anbu towards the hot springs. What the hell? Naruto balked. Tra, his godfather, was spying on the woman's side like normal. What wasn't normal was him sitting on an enlarged angel struggling to hold the scale up and the sage body weight. Being the size of a lion didn't what it seemed. What are you doing, Jurasama? Shh, quiet, Gaki. Angel, a bit larger, please. Good. Naruto looked at Pan. Why is my cat your seat? Training. Now shush. Angel looked up with a save me expression. Grinning deviously, he cupped his cheeks. Pervert! There's a pervert here! Oh my god! He screamed. Tenko Noichi screamed and jumped over the wall with towels on. Angel instantly went back to normal size and jumped into the Naruto's arms. Aljara met with a Fitting fate with the duos discreetly used a sunshine. Kaki, you'll pay for that. All my research is lost. I should kill you with this. Jiraiya cried as he sat down to a normal ramen, gorgi Naruto and fish-eating angel. I am just kept giving the cat more fish with star in her eyes. Please, you're a pirate. Besides, if you kill me, you couldn't see me do this. And satisfaction filled Naruto's eyes as a perfect Rasengan came to life. Jiraiya looked gobsmacked. Recovering quickly, the man smirked evilly. Ah, my precious student. As you now mastered that technique, it's my duty to assess you and your partner's skill through all out spar. Jira grabbed the now trembling Naruto and Angel and took them away to the training ground with a wave of the ramen stand. Why me? was heard throughout the whole village. Konoha Hospital. Kabuto Yakushi couldn't keep the smile off his face as he left his boss's office. As head of both the Anbu and regular hospital, the lead medic had updated files on all the active ninjas in addition to keep his notes from every council meeting. Konoha had been lax for years and even now it wasn't uncommon for bits of information to slip through. So they think missing ninja are banding together or are actually working for Kiri or Eva, eh? My how convenient. Best not tip them off to Rochimaru-sama's pact with Suna then. In the young spy's apartment, a certain bandaged man was waiting. A man Kabuto personally hated and with a passion after the attempted assassination, Danzo. He said neutrally. Danzo looked up. To what do I owe the pleasure, Kabuto? Just dropping by, a certain snake and I could share a common goal and information if you like some help, that is. I'm listening, Kabuto said hesitantly. As this is where I'm going to be leaving this part of guys, I hope you like this one. Sorry about the noise and mispronunciation, I'm just tired. It's like 1 a.m. in the night so yeah i'm pretty much tired and beat off i just recorded two videos one you seen yesterday and today's so yeah happy new year as well to you all and this is apollo chiha and i'm signing out peace